So what's making me really happy this year is that we got all these little baby rhubarb plants popping up and we didn't plant any seeds. So the seeds must have come off of the rhubarb down to here. And so let's see if we can, here's one and here's another one. And there's, uh, I don't know, it seems like there was like a dozen of them in here somewhere and I'm not spotting them right now. Oh wait, here's one, here's one right here. So here's, here's another one right here and here's another one right here. In fact, I'm gonna take out this lamb's quarters right there. This is a volunteer potato. <laughs> so I don't know how long ago there was potatoes growing here, but we didn't plant any potatoes this year. And here's a potato just jumping up out of the ground. Now this berm has no hugel culture bits in it at all, but it's just packed with life this year. And uh, so this is uh, some alfalfa. And we didn't, I don't remember planting any alfalfa this year. So this must be from some seed uh, um, last year or the year before. And alfalfa uh, is very particular about pH. So the pH must be probably 7.0 to 7.2. So it's an indicator of pH. Here's some uh, lettuces. Here's another uh, potato. That's another volunteer potato. Uh, here's some peas. We did plant some uh, field peas this year to try and help improve uh, the soil uh, organic matter, especially in here because this is just rocks and sand. At the top of the uh, berm right here, you can see sunchokes. We got tons of sunchokes. Every year when summer comes by and it gets so hot, they all cook and look so terribly sad. But then every year they come back and we haven't watered this. Actually, I got to change that just a little bit. We generally never water this, but last year there were some forest fires in the area and we put some water on some of the, the berms and hugel beds. Uh, because we were worried about them catching on fire because they were dry and covered with all kinds of, of uh, dry straw and dry matter. And so it's like, oh no. So we, we wetted them a couple of times just to kind of be safe. So this is a dry stack wall. And uh, Jocelyn and I built it this spring. Basically, uh, there was already a little bit of a dry stack wall over there. And then up here, the trail got to be about this wide as all the material kept sloughing off down and, uh, to this flat spot. So we dug out all that dirt, brought it over here, and this property is like a giant rock. So we went and collected up a bunch of bigger rocks and brought them down here, and we, we stacked them up uh, and, and made a quick dry stack wall. Notice how this rock is really blocky shaped. It, it makes it really great for making a quick dry stack. And uh, this didn't, this is probably a total of maybe two hours worth of work. It's not that much. But uh, because it, we got so much of this blocky rock around here, we can stack it. But now the problem with this rock is, is that it's, it's not a particularly great rock. So this might last 20 years. Uh, but if we had stone, we could build something that might last 200 years. But it would also probably take 10 times longer to build it. This rhubarb is probably one of our happier, healthier rhubarbs. There's another one around the corner that was, had these leaves that were this big, but Somebody got carried away harvesting it, and now it looks kind of sad. But uh, this is kind of an interesting combination. We've got a, a bunch of this stuff growing here. And when I first saw this stuff, I thought, hey, that looks like bindweed. But, uh, and I was, I was starting to pull it all out. And Fred said, no, it's not bindweed. It is wild buckwheat. And so, uh, let it go. It's going to build the soil. It has these amazing tap roots and it's such a tender plant. It's easy to pull out whenever you don't want it. So we're letting it take over wherever it wants to kind of fill in. And uh, it's, it's, it's a magnificent job. Now this is kind of funny though, because this is Sepholzer's grain and it will grow to eight and a half feet tall. Um, and it just, it, it does magnificent things at improving the soil and it provides an edible grain but the buckwheat has found that it loves this stuff. It can get up so high and, and do so much. Now, this particular bed, uh, um, this is right here, this is about three years old. And uh, the first year it was just a barren pile of dirt and a few weeds started to grow on it. And in the second year, the, the deer and the wild turkeys just ate everything on it. And in the third year it was rabbits and chipmunks. And then this last winter, 
uh, there was a feral cat in the area and Jocelyn started putting water out for it and little treats and next thing you know the cat's hanging around and so basically all this lushness I blame on the cat. So, because uh, last year, it's like hardly anything could grow because all of the, the rabbits and the chipmunks would just gobble it all up. But this year, it's just really come to life. Previous years, we planted all of our favorite garden plants, but the chipmunks and the rabbits would just eat it all. And so, uh, what we're doing is we, we hope to keep that cat well charmed and staying around. And then uh, next spring, we will plant all of our favorite garden plants and hopefully have a, a big lush garden. But now one of the things is, is that since this hugel culture bed is so steep, the way that Sepp Holzer wants it, that it's difficult to mulch, not impossible to mulch, just difficult. So we have a lot of uh, snowberry and Saskatoon growing on this uh, br brush that grows wild around here. We got tons of it, but we're letting it grow because it's putting roots down inside, building that organic matter and helping to build something to help hold this hugel culture to such a steep angle. And then next year when we plant the gardens, we'll, we'll trim it back so it's only like this tall, tall enough to hold the mulch in place. <laughs> so uh, it begins and you can kind of see just how lush it's getting. Um, now the, the rhubarb, I planted this a couple of years ago and I've been babying it quite a bit, but now it has uh, um, gone crazy. It's, it's gone years without irrigation. In fact, this year, all of this lush, this is without any irrigation at all and it's July so we're doing pretty good but you can see that there's some spots where there's some stuff not growing and if we look hard enough we'll find a couple of little patches of some bare soil so we're gonna grow more and more and more get more and more greenery but another thing is is that a lot of this greenery we're currently using is chop and drop for the things we wish to encourage we wish to encourage Sepp Holzer's grain we wish to encourage the wild buckwheat um, Lamb's quarters is growing here. It's a weed, but we still eat it. I bet we eat some lamb's quarters every day. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about hugel culture, homesteading, and permaculture all the time.